The central premise of this channel is that aging and disease are biochemical processes that happen over many decades. And if we track and optimize well-established biomarkers of organ and systemic health, can aging and disease risk be slowed? So with that in mind, earlier this month, I blood tested for the seventh time in 2022. So what's my biological age? So here we can see that data, and this is using Dr. Morgan Levine's phenotypic age calculator as a metric of biological age. And if you're interested in measuring your own biological age, that link will be in the video's description. So when entering data for its nine component biomarkers and chronological age, we can see that my phenotypic age or biological age is 32.6 years, which is 17.3 years younger than my chronological. Now note that Quest's high sensitivity C-reactive protein measurement was less than 0.3 milligrams per liter. Again, we've seen this in many recent videos. So CRP could be less than 0.3, but not more than 0.3. So the overall biological age could actually be a little bit less. And besides looking at data in a spreadsheet, uh, all of the blood test data from the lab will be included via screenshots at the end of the video. So if you're interested in that, check it out. Now note that this is just one test. For more context, let's have a look at biological age results since 2018. And I have 22 blood tests over that time span. And that's what we can see here. So first from 2018 to 2019, I had three blood tests with a, an average pheno age or Levine biological age of 36.1 years. Then over six tests in 2020, my average was 35.6. Similarly in 2021, again, 35.6. And then over the seven tests in 2022, my average pheno age was 33.8 years. Now, rather than just looking at averages from year to year, we can compare these data using a two sample t-test. And when comparing the 12 tests in 2020 to 2021 versus the seven in 2022, we can see that I was able to significantly reduce the biological age score for 2022 when compared with the earlier two years. So that's one way in looking at the data. Another is by looking at the difference for chronological age CA minus biological age BA. And prior to this year, my average biological age reduction relative to chronological age was 11.9 years, and that's over 15 tests. Thus far in 2022, over the seven tests, we can see that each of the tests was had a greater reduction than 11.9 years, for the chronological age minus biological age, such that my average reduction for CA minus BA was 15.5 years. So I was able to further reduce biological age relative to the 15 tests uh, uh, before 2022. So I'll, I'll update in a future video, hopefully sooner rather than later, I'm hoping to get it done sometime next week, for which biomarkers improved year over year rather than just looking at the overall biological age score. Now, uh, PhenoAge isn't the only biological age tool that I use. Also, I include aging.ai. So what's my aging.ai age? So aging.ai includes uh, 19 component biomarkers, more specifically 19 biomarkers on aging.ai 3.0. And we can see my data here. So if you're interested in double checking my numbers, it's using the North American data set and these values. And when I enter these values, I get a predicted, a predicted age of 28 years which is 21.9 years younger than my chronological. Now, just like we did for Levine's test, this is just one test. So for more context, let's have a look at previous data for aging.ai age. And that's what we can see here. So I have a lot more data for aging.ai age. I have 37 blood tests that go back to 2009. Uh, so 37 blood tests over the period from 2009 to uh, 2022. So when I first started testing, or when I first started having uh, data that I could use to compute aging.ai age, that was in 2009. And over three tests, over a five-year span, my average was 32 years. Now, are three tests over five years representative of the uh, aging.ai age or overall biological age? So with that in mind, in 2016, I started testing more often. And we can see that from 2016 to 2021, I have 27 blood tests with an average aging.ai age of 29.9 years. So what about 2022? Well, we can see that with the green arrows and over the seven tests in 2022, my average aging.ai age was 29.4 years. Now, just like we did for PhenoAge, I can compare these data uh, from 2016 to 2021 versus 2022 using a two sample t-test. And when I did that, the data are not significantly different. In other words, over from 2016 to 2022, over that seven year span, my average yearly aging.ai age is consistently in the 29 to 30 year range, regardless of my chronological age. 
All right, so what may be contributing to these biological age reductions for these two tests, including supplements, fitness, and or diet? And I'll cover that in future videos. Again, I'm hoping to get a lot of that done next week as I've got a week off from uh, in-person work. So stay tuned for that. So if you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch, and I'll show the blood test data. So for the discount links, uh, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, which is what you can see here. And if you're interested in that, that link will be in the video's description too. Now on to the blood test data. And I usually just let this data play, but I want to highlight a couple of things uh, that will be included and talked about in upcoming videos. The first is homocysteine. You can see that my value is 10 micromolar. And uh, for those who think I'm anti-supplements, I'm not. I just started glycine supplementation with the goal of bringing down homocysteine somewhere in the seven and a half range. Uh, and so I, I started that on December uh, 15th uh, of this year. And for the rationale, if you're interested in the why behind why glycine and not other stuff, uh, I intend on making a video update for that. So stay tuned for that very soon. It should be coming very soon, not later. What I also want to highlight is DHEA sulfate. And my value for this test was 109 micrograms per deciliter. Now, just like homocysteine, which relatively higher values are associated with uh, an increased all-cause mortality risk, and they increase during aging, so my value is going in the wrong direction. Similarly, my DHEA sulfate uh, value is low, and DHEA sulfate has been shown to decline during aging, and relatively lower levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. Now, for this test, I try to reduce my fructose intake and why my fructose intake and how that links with DHEA sulfate. I'll do a video update on that. So also stay tuned for that data. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.